A few months ago, I had Carl Cadler on my podcast. He talked about this idea that 97% of collagen is permanent, but 3% of your total collagen isn't permanent. You make it and you degrade it every day. So now that I've had some time to read the research by his group, watch some videos, and understand this a little bit better, let's look at how this is hypothetically done. So this paper covers everything about this permanent and sacrificial collagen. It's titled Circadian Control of the Secretory Pathway Maintains Collagen Homeostasis. This paper zoomed into the fibril level of the collagen, so let's go back to the tendon hierarchy. It starts with one big tendon, it goes down into fascicles, it goes into fibers, then fibrils, and finally into collagen. So we're going to zoom into the fiber level so we can look at the individual fibrils. If you look at this photo, there's a bunch of fibrils, um, which are the dark spots, and they're packed into the fiber. And you can see they have pretty perfect alignment. So if we look at the formation of the fibrils, how do you get to this point to having your fiber packed with all of these individual fibrils, which are packed with all of the individual collagen molecules? In the research by Hannemeyer and others, they found that tendon fibrils are built by about the age of 17. It takes you about 17 years to get to that point of having all those fibrils. And then they don't turn over anymore. They said they have a half-life of about 200 years. So if you're past the age of 17, your fibrils are done. They have been built, and now you're going to use them for the rest of your life. And this brings up the problem posed by the paper. They said, this has led to the idea that collagen fibrils are static and unchanging. However, the difficulty with zero turnover is that it does not explain the absence of fatigue failure, which would be expected in the face of lifelong cyclic loading. In contrast to the evidence of zero replacement, fibroblasts synthesize collagen in response to mechanical loading, and the Achilles tendon shows elevated levels of procollagen 1 after moderate exercise. So if fibrils aren't changing past the age of 17, why isn't everyone snapping their tendons as they get older? And why would your body synthesize more collagen after exercise if it's not going to do anything? In the paper, they said zero turnover and continued synthesis can coexist. And this is how. They said a pool of persistent collagen coexists with a pool of sacrificial collagen, in which the latter is synthesized and removed on a daily basis under the control of the circadian clock. So let's look back at the fibrils to see what this would look like. The persistent collagen would be the large tendon fibrils. These are the ones that took you 17 years for you to build, and now they're going to stay like that for the rest of your life. But attached alongside these and weaving around them are the sacrificial or the small fibrils. These are synthesized and removed daily, um, unless you take an animal and you knock out its circadian clock. But outside of that situation, these sacrificial collagens are synthesized and they're removed daily, and you can use them to protect the large tendon fibrils. So building on the video I did on the interfascicular matrix and how that protects collagen by allowing sliding between fascicles, you also have this going on. Sacrificial fibrils that are being built and destroyed every day, helping to take some of the load off of the permanent fibrils and thus protecting the collagen within those fibrils that are not changing. Now the question is, what can you do with all this information? Uh, I don't really know yet, and I don't think any researchers do either. But knowing that you have this automatic process going on should make you feel good about your tendons. Load them wisely, be patient, and maybe that's enough to keep them healthy. Maybe that's enough to get you out of a tendinopathy. So hopefully that helps. Try it out. Enjoy.